Hi, this is Neil from EA Media. Well, today there is a couple stories on CNBC that I want to talk about, all with regards to uh, China and their cybersecurity law. By the way, while you're watching this video, don't forget to click on subscribe for this channel. That way we can grow the EA Media community. As I usually do first thing in the morning, I go looking at the cybersecurity news feeds that I have hooked into the EA Media website. What I found wasn't surprising because of previous articles I've read, but at the same time, made me think that this was a hint of things to come when it comes to the internet. NBC had two stories, both related. The first, VPN crackdown, unthinkable trial by firewall for China's research world, talked about how the new cybersecurity laws and the border firewall was limiting their ability to research and grow their knowledge. The second article, in China, Big Tech Confronts New Walls, talked about the barriers of entry into the Chinese marketplace, including those dealing with Chinese censors and their grape virtual wall of China. Most of what was written was focusing on how translated North American business practices were not being that successful in China. That relates more to the differences in society than to any technological or cybersecurity issues. But there were enough issues raised in the stories that hint at the Chinese censor and the great Chinese virtual wall that it warranted writing about why this happens, and how, if another country was going to do it, it could be done. One caveat first, I believe that each country's society is what that country's citizens want. There isn't any endless line of immigrants trying to get into Canada or the US. Yes, there are immigrants. But when you look at the size of China's population, currently estimated at roughly 1.379 billion people in 2016, you don't see hundreds of millions of people wanting to leave. And I say that with the knowledge that comes from being married to a first-generation daughter of Chinese immigrants. So, first off, why does this happen? Well, look at what's been happening in the world today. You have a U.S. election that's just been impacted by fake news that's been propagated by Facebook sites and innumerable pop-up websites just to impact the way people think. You have widely divergent privacy legislation being put into place around the world. And you have organization after organization being hacked into either for criminal or hacktivism or for nation-state gains. If you see all that happen, and you come from a society that has either some socialistic or authoritarian leanings, your first thought is to put limits on what is going on in order to protect your society. You put in laws to guide how people use technology, and then you put in infrastructure to assist in the enforcement of those laws. Those two things always happen. Put in a law, then put in an enforcement mechanism. But in this case, we're talking about technology. You always read about how science and technology is way ahead of politicians and the laws societies have. Take, for example, cloning. Scientists are able to clone different organisms, so what stops them from cloning a person? If they could clone Dolly the sheep, how much different is that from cloning a person? Any laws preventing that? Nope. So things like the laws associated with technology are not that far-fetched. So here's the question. How would you design that? This is a case where cybersecurity isn't for protection as much as is for enforcement. If you were to work for a large enterprise, a large part of what you were doing is enforcing security policy. This just happens to be occurring on a much larger scale, millions or billions of people worth rather than hundreds of thousands you'd probably put in a web proxy to isolate your country and minimize any understanding of the internal architecture. You'd probably have a firewall in place to control specific ports and applications coming in and going out. If you have to deal with VPN, then you probably have a DMARC location for the VPN tunnel and then force the scanning through the web proxy itself. Remember, you can't scan if you can't see. You'd probably have some sort of IPS device that was scaled to deal with a country in order to monitor for improper traffic patterns. 
And you'd probably do things like have malware protection for your more important assets, which in a country will go into more economic areas like banking or healthcare or utilities. And then remembering that people are always part of every solution that you deal with. You'd have to have the appropriate security operations center to monitor it all. By the way, that just got me thinking. Has anyone ever heard of a successful cyber attack inside China? No, if you were to look at the Great Virtual Wall of China, it's much more like a very, very large-scale enterprise than it is an authoritarian state. And, based on my experience with Chinese culture, that actually may be a very good way for you to understand their society as well. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you like it, please take a look at some of our other videos. Don't forget to click on subscribe. And if you want, you can also find our videos at our website at ea.media. That's it for now. My name is Neil Rarup. I'm with EA Media, and I hope this helps.